Hey, good weekend to you and welcome to Leading Edge. We hope you are well. I'm Jerry Anderson. Good to have you along. All right, so we had been all set to talk about the Ohio primary. Voters would decide many issues, from an increase in Toledo's income tax to the Democratic nominee for president of the United States. But as you now know, the primary didn't happen because COVID-19 did. This coronavirus has shut down schools and restaurants and bars and now auto factories and really life as we know it. Still, other states voted Tuesday. We will explore what they said and where we are in the presidential sweepstakes. That's coming up. But first, a view of the coronavirus with a local slant. Dr. Jonathan Ross is president of the Lucas County Regional Health District Board. That's the board that oversees the Toledo Lucas County Health Department. A retired doctor of internal medicine, longtime specialist on issues regarding medicine and society. He joins us via Skype. Doctor, welcome in as we record this week. We are several days away from the show airing, so any recitation of the numbers of current cases in Lucas County locally would likely be dated. But you tell me that by early to midweek this past week, you got guidance from China's experience, which revealed something about how this virus got off to a running start there before large efforts were made to contain it. What was that? Well, we've been looking not just at China, but around yep. the world. And, and in all honesty, what we've learned is that there are a significant number of people who either get hardly ill at all or very mildly ill. They're mostly younger. And they're probably transmitting this illness without even knowing that they're doing it. Uh, it could feel like a mild cold or hardly any symptoms at all, or maybe a mild version of the flu to the point where they don't take precautions to not go out, especially if they're driven to go out by the need to make it to a job or whatever. Which kind of so, underscores why we're having people kind of shelter in place here. We'll get more into that. And young people, it does make you, oh, we're not, you're not doing this intentionally. It makes you carriers. Looking at the Chinese time, timeline or even the Italians. Where are we now in comparison to their experience? Can we draw any parallels, doctor? Uh, absolutely. This is a little bit like an airplane taking off or a rocket taking off. It has a gradual slow rise and then all of a sudden jumps up. Uh, we call that a logarithmic curve because it goes up so quickly. Uh, it's a multiplier of multipliers. And, uh, and so that's what happens is that each person with this particular illness, if they're sick with it themselves, is probably going to infect somewhere between two and three other people. So you get a doubling or tripling of the number of people who are sick every few days because most people are going to get sick after they're exposed if they do get significantly ill somewhere between two days and 14 days after they've been exposed. Wow. So in that period, we've got a long time for people to not be very sick, to go be going about their business and spreading the virus and giving it to others. All right. And, and since those cases that we're talking about involved infected people who had few or no symptoms and who felt fine for the most part, then the only way to determine who is infected and likely to pass the virus and to know that is testing, right? Now, the Toledo Lucas County Health Department started a drive-through testing program this week, but not for everyone. So who's eligible to be tested and what are the results showing so far? Well, this is a very difficult situation for us. As you know, there was a sluggish start to the testing that was yep. created by our own Centers for Disease Control at the national level. The test kits weren't working, weren't functioning. Um, since then, there's been a tremendous effort made to try and bring on other testing companies to get more and more tests out there. Um, so at the current time, we're still trying to be very uh, frugal and careful with those tests. And, and we are recommending people get tested uh, if they've got symptoms. It would be ideal to test more broadly, but it's, we've, we've got issues with having enough materials to do it and enough lab uh, time to get it done. So what the decision was made, and I think this is a wise one, uh, is to actually have people call set up a time to go and get tested, mm -hmm. but they will be screened based on their symptoms. Okay. So, and this is why, because if all you have is a fever and a cough and you're otherwise not feeling ill in a severe way and you can care for yourself at home, that's what's gonna happen to you anyway. It would be nice to know, but we're, uh, we don't have the testing materials to really be absolutely certain. They, it, it, depending on whether you've had an exposure, if you were exposed to another person who was diagnosed with COVID-19, then we're probably gonna ask to come and get checked. All right. Or it may be that we'll wanna check people 
who have already proved positive in the community and have identified others as contacts who All are right. less symptomatic. Okay, so but short of just, universal testing, short of universal testing, our best defense yes. so far seems to be this, they're calling it social distancing. If that is yes. the case, should our local governments here, as has been done elsewhere, should our local governments mandate, and I'm gonna underscore that word, sheltering in place? Uh, I don't think we're there yet. Okay. Uh, I think that we, it, it may come to a point where we decide that that's the best thing for the, the health of the people. But at this particular point, I think that uh, people have been pretty cooperative about trying not to go out unnecessarily. And I think that if we can get general cooperation around that, especially for the old, the sick, and the vulnerable, okay. uh, that is going to be the best thing. They may want to mandate themselves to stay right. home because if they get sick, they're the ones that are the, that are ending up in the in, uh, in the hospital, in the intensive care unit, right. and even passing away from this nasty bug. Dr. Jonathan Ross is my guest. He's the president of the, uh, the Board of Health. Uh, much more to talk about. Almost everybody agrees it's going to get worse, folks, before it gets better. So I want to pick up with our readiness. We're going to take a break. Dr. Ross will be back with more. This is Leading Edge. Don't go away.